Welcome, brothers and sisters, to the Meher Baba program. I'm Fred Stankis from the Meher Baba Center here in Southern California. And today is part two of the program that we had last week about uh, Meher Baba's uh, book, God Speaks, which describes the subtle, mental, and uh, the, I should say the gross, subtle, and mental, and also from the nothing and the everything by Baal Kalchuri, uh, which uh, was uh, basically part of what Meher Baba dictated in a special publication, a book that is yet to be found. There was uh, in the, the Nothing and the Everything, there's about 20% of that book which is described. And we'll read from the Nothing and Everything now. The, it says, um, Words cannot convey the bliss of self-realization when a soul attains God-realization. There is no desire that touches the divine power and no thought can imagine the divine intelligence. But to convey an idea of it, we'll give you an example. Suppose a man is a pauper and has spent his whole life in misery, ignorance, and deg degradation. The poor man is deprived of every human necessity, decent clothing, decent food and drink. He is so wretched that few people can stand his sight. People harass him continually, and he finds little or no sleep. In short, life is a torture to him. If after living such a miserable life for years, suddenly one morning this man finds a million dollars near his cot. Imagine how great must be his happiness. He may spend and enjoy whatever money he can buy. This instance would be considered an act of grace, but not divine grace. Divine grace gives one realization of the self which is beyond anything imaginable. This instance does not convey the real feeling of bliss that one experiences in the realization of one's soul. Realization cannot be described. It must be experienced to be known. Only the experience imparts the knowledge of self. This bliss is beyond imagination. Everyone is God, and there is nothing except God. But because of illusion, man thinks that he is limited. To have an idea of that moment when divine consciousness overwhelms a man in this illusion, take the instance of an old-fashioned movie projectionist. Illusion is like a movie. The scenes of life are pictures on the screen. Man's mind is a movie projector. The film in the projector is like the impressions in his mind. As the projectionist cranks the movie projector with his hand, at the same time he becomes absorbed in watching the picture. The projectionist becomes so absorbed in the movie, he forgets that he is the one rotating the machine, his mind, which projects the picture through the film of impressions or sanskaras. His emotions are swayed according to the different scenes throughout the film. He laughs and he weeps. The man is overwhelmed and forgets that pictures have no reality and do not really exist, exist except as imagination. Now visualize that suddenly a scorpion stings him, and the pain makes him lift his hand off the machine, but which brings this machine to a standstill, with the result that there is no longer any picture on the screen. Instantly the man realizes it was he who was rotating the projector, and the movie on the screen was dependent on his action, the thinking of his mind. The man's laughter and weeping were a result of his own ignorance of the reality of the situation. Sanskaras or impressions are the film that creates the impression of a picture of life before one's eyes. When the impressions stop turning because of the scorpion sting, the man realizes that it is his own impressions that project the picture of creation. So intense and sudden is the experience, like a scorpion sting, that overpowers one when they experience the self. Because of the overwhelming force of the sting, one is awakened not to pain but to bliss. It requires such intense pain that, like which comes from a scorpion to stop the mind, to annihilate limitation. But the result is bliss. So, Meher Baba defines in this chart that we're looking here uh, at my right, the basic creation, evolution, reincarnation, involution, and realization. And what he's describing now is that state when the soul is traversed through evolution 
evolution, now remember folks, is the one soul going through all these forms, not reproducing into another soul, it's consciousness which is expanding from the stone, metal, vegetable, worm, insect, reptile, fish, bird, animals, and then humans. And then eventually the human being goes through so many lifetimes, according to Mirababa, 8,400,000, that eventually gets to the point where it asks the question, who am I? What am I? Where am I going? And that's when one starts unwinding his impressions, which is called entering the path. Path with a capital P-A-T-H, to where you then start creating, or you could say, unwinding the impressions that have masked you from knowing your true self. In other words, the difference between you and your own self is just the impressions. If a, if a perfect master came into your company, they literally could maybe wipe off all those impressions in an instant. And they could be billions of impressions. But of course, if you don't have that uh, perfect master, which most of us don't, because we are all part of the creation itself. So, uh, in fact, I, I have to go to a story in India. Sometimes you'll talk to some of the followers of Meher Baba who said, you know, I don't want to be realized I want to come back again and again in physical form to be with him in another advent when he comes back again, whether it's 700, 1400, or 21 years, 2100 years from now, because I want to be and share the feeling and love and what he gave to us, even though it's sometimes very, you know, uh, painful and very austere, because to be with him is, is, is greater than being, you know, liberated. And so, um, Mihir Baba has said that when the impressions stop, the sanskaric impressions stop, the imagination stops projecting on the screen of life, and the mind no longer experiences limitless, limitlessness. In other words, they say, to, to find yourself, you must die to yourself, thus loss is gain. When we say die, we don't mean physical death, we mean the ego dies, the mind seed dies to where you then are not limited anymore. Because I think of myself, I'm Fred, uh, that's Tiffany at the camera, that's Brenda in the control room. When my mind dies, I don't see any division. I see oneness amongst all, and I respect all and, and love them just as much as I love myself because I don't see any divisions. So that's what is we're limited because we're limited into feeling and thinking of ourselves and projecting that. And then how can he who realizes his own infinite self laugh or weep at these pictures? How can he have desires when he realizes his imagination has created him? Well, in Nirvana, one sees nothing else but one's infinite shadow. Even God appears not to exist. But instantly one realizes that this infinite shadow is the nothing, and one's own infinite shadow, the soul, is the everything. So that goes with the theme of this book, the nothing and the everything. So to realize the goal of life, God, to realize God is the goal of life. But after realization, all are not destined to regain consciousness of the gross, subtle, or mental worlds in order to work for the entire illusory creation, to advance other souls towards realizing the goal. During realization, one loses all consciousness of creation, but gains all consciousness of God. To regain creation consciousness, one must come down from the state of infinity to the state of finiteness, to be the ocean in the drop form or man form. Those who are not destined to regain their human identity, yet who stay alive, may outwardly look mad or abnormal, but inwardly they are enjoying infinite bliss. Such divine mad ones are the Brahma Bhuts or Mahazubs. They appear mad because they do not relate to normal people or any aspect of mental, subtle, or gross creation. Nothing impresses such a one. They are drowned in God, the ocean, and know themselves only as the ocean, not as a drop. And those can be found in India. Uh, the Mir Baba did extensive work with the God intoxicated and the God mad. There is another story in the nothing and the everything, which is of great interest. This describes the third plane and the third heaven. It said, the third heaven, or the pure world, is divided into three sections or parts. The first section is the state of Indra. In Sanskrit, Indra Lok, the abode of the rain god to Hindus, and in Persian, Makani Horai, the house of the fairies. The second section is the abode of the angels, or the abode of the gods, in Sanskrit, Devalok. The Greek and Roman gods were these angels, 
or divas, and they are the Hindu gods. The third section is the actual section of Am el Kudasi, where the pilgrim experiences subtle knowledge. This knowledge is not gnosis, but occult or mystic knowledge. Each section in the third heaven holds millions of times more bliss, more happiness, more powers than the second heaven. We're speaking now of the various planes of consciousness that are in the involutionary state but very few souls experience. We're talking about these on Time Warner cable access because I'm sure there's no other station in the world that is talking about these kind of things in this book. And so it's good to put these in an archive to where you realize such works exist, such as the nothing and the everything. The state of subtle consciousness known as Indra is the state of the first section of the third heaven. Indra is known as the king of the gods or the king of the angels, the same as the Greek Zeus or the Roman Jupiter. In Persian, Indra's abode is Makani Hori, H-O-O-R-I, the house of the fairies or the house of beautiful women. Indra's fairies are feminine subtle beings, a type of angel with exceptional beauty and charm. This state of Indra is referred to as a post of divinity, a station of considerable power and certain duties concerning the elements of nature, specifically to do with the earth. If a man successfully performs a severe penance, such as Chila Nashi, which is staying inside a circle for 40 days and nights, when he drops his physical body, this man attains the Indra state. But can you do that? Can you stay within the circle for 40 days and 40 nights? This means that a gross conscious man becomes Indra and gains a subtle identity with the status or king. The powers, the duties of that post or throne. He has become the king of the gods, Zeus, Jupiter, who rules 330 million angels. Being king of the angels is an experience of Alma Akudasi, which is millions of times more blissful than any experience in the second heaven or al Ruhani. Though his subtle body, through his subtle body, he consciously experiences the bliss of being deified and holds that post while in a disembodied state. For one epoch, which equals four cycles, which each cycle is 26,000 years, this human holds the post of Indra and is very possessive of it. Many times those men, ascetics in the gross world, who are striving to attain the post of Indra, will have their penance disturbed by the individual currently holding that throne. And this is something I never realized, I mean, that these things are going on in the cosmos. I mean, you know, here there is uh, basically something that is in the subtle sphere going on, and, and basically... Uh, I mean, some of the myths that you read, or you think they're myths, like the great epic, the Ramayana uh, from India, describes these great, great epic battles, Ravana, and, uh, and of course, Rama, and Lakshman, and, and so forth. And they're wonderful epics because they describe, from a mythical point of view, but actually, uh, some of that probably has some meaning because these battles and these, these so-called lessons are being on another level of consciousness. So it says... Many times those men in the gross world who are striving to attain the post of Indra will have their penance disturbed by the individual currently holding that throne. The suffering uh, are actually disturbed by Indra himself who sends all kinds of temptations their way from the most frightful to the most seductive to defeat the penance and have it stop. Those who fail to dethrone Indra are overcome by their own fear during the penance. Indra will do anything to keep his throne but despite efforts to stay in power the individual holding the Indra post must leave it after one epoch and again take a human body on earth. That individual who is Indra progresses higher while incarnate. It is important to understand that this individual titled Indra exists in his subtle body and inhabits the heavens while disembodied but cannot progress. So we're describing, as, as I said earlier, this is not on the gross plane. In subtle consciousness until he incarnates, incarnates again. In other words, Zeus must come down from Olympus. Jupiter must abandon the abode of the gods and become a man again to advance a higher higher toward the fourth plane. There are 558 human beings on the third plane of Salix. Right here, when we, we go here, I'm pointing out to the third plane, see this? There's only 558 on this plane here, right here, um, that are Salix. And even more as must are absorbed in the heavens between the third and fourth plane, right here. In other words, there's some uh, souls conscious here. But you see these numbers? 
there's not that many folks. Uh, there's millions and millions of people here. But when you get on the planes, it's quite refined because there are safeguards to keep people from abusing their powers and so forth when you get on the spiritual path. When we talk about these powers, these, these people believe that they are on the realm of the spiritual highway. They're not in the realm of the gross physical world. So they don't have the same desires and attractions that we have. And said, so the angels are the ancient gods of mythology. Indra controls the angels and assigns duties to them, making certain that each angel fulfills its duty in the proper way for the balance of nature in creation. Angels inhabit the second section of the third heaven. Uh, it's called Diva Lok. Angels are the divas who have only subtle form and no gross physical body. A pilgrim with third plane consciousness can see angels as a normal man sees gross physical uh, creatures. Angels do not pass through evolution in the gross world. Angels are those drop bubbles who remain stationary in the subtle world during the first six stages of movement in the ocean of nothing and never reach the seventh stage, the gross world. When the drop bu bubbles first entered creation through the mental planes unconsciously, some became archangels that exist in the sixth heaven. Those who became angels continued to pass through the mental planes, but attained consciousness when they entered the third plane's second heaven, the angelic abode Diva Lok, or the first heaven, Makani Hori, and became fairies. Though completely happy and enjoying bliss to the fullest, all as automatons of the will of Indra, angels still aspire to attain human form because only in human form can a soul become God realized. God realization is the divine goal of all life, not angelic existence or being a God among gods. So the angels and archangels must attain a human form as also Indra must leave his throne and give up his reign to progress further toward Godhood. After an angel has existed in Diva Lok for four cycles, the angel has the opportunity of being born in human form. After only one birth and lifetime as a human being, that archangel or angel receives liberation from all future births and deaths, mukti, the state of infinite bliss realized. Would it be nice to meet that person who was previously an archangel or angel and born in this world for that one lifetime? Woo! I bet there's something qu quite special person. Um, because, I mean, they must be really righteously good and beautiful people. But a lot of them probably will choose maybe just being a quiet, maybe a librarian. <laughs> or they could maybe be a research scientist someplace who just, you know, they know the game of the world. They know basically what it is. I mean, uh, I was listening to a tape recently of uh, this Baba follower. He's a chiropractor. He was a blind man. There was a blind chiropractor, Dr. Harry Kenmore, from New York, who worked on there, Baba, while he was uh, in the body back in the 50s and 60s. And, and when somebody uh, asked him a question about, uh, you know, basically getting ahead in this world, how can one find spirituality in this world, what kind of profession to take and so forth. And he said basically it's just following good precepts, it doesn't matter what kind of work you do, if you're honest, kind and loving, and he said, and don't take this world as the source of realization. He says, this world basically is geared by, well a lot of people call it Maya, illusion, I guess in Christendom it's called Satan. It's ruled by an ignorance that governs you and basically makes you, you know, not, uh, attract yourself to things that are not basically, uh, what's the word, helpful to your progress, to unwinding your impressions. Because it's like when you go to Las Vegas, you could easily get lost in the entertainment and the lights and the, the fun and the uh, shows and whatever. And the point of it is, you could forget yourself the same with the world. So I'm sure that angel or these archangels who are born for that one life. Isn't that amazing though? Here we're getting information, folks. I mean, this this book was dictated, or excuse me, was written by Baal Kalchuri, uh, and uh, I have a, a picture of dear brother Baal, who's, who is now, uh, I believe, uh, is, I think his uh, 80th, uh, 80th birthday, I believe, uh, he just uh, experienced. Uh, and uh, he... He, he authored the book, he's there with Baba, 
and uh, and the thing is, he said ten, twenty percent of the book that was basically uh, lost um, uh, uh, that Mir Baba authored back in the nineteen twenties is contained in the Nothing and Everything, the manuscript of the book, which was this special book that Baba wrote. Baba has dictated God Speaks, which I referred to in this chart, by the way, is a book that was published by Sufism Reoriented in 1961. And uh, Baba dictated this entire book uh, with Don Stevens uh, helping with the editing and publishing. And um, it is a tremendous work. And, uh, and this chart comes from God Speaks. Uh, describing all this, uh, the uh, what it says, the formless and colorless God's creative and impulsive imagination, and to know Himself as omnipresent, infinite, and eternal, and uh, the gross sphere, which includes countless suns, stars, moons, and the earth, on which only it is possible to attain God realization on earth. In other words, ba Baba has said that there are other worlds inhabited with uh, human life, but the earth is 50% mind development, 50% heart development, and there are other planets that have 75% mind development, 25% mind development, and then there's a planet with 100% mind development. Those are human beings, and what we're speaking of is that quality of, of, the, of the mind, the heart-mind combination versus, you know, the earth's. So, um, it says the universe, though huge and immeasurably vast and of countless variety, is a closed system. And a balance of nature must be maintained within the universal container or the universal body. The universal container holds all light, all heat, all sound, all water, all the elements contained in nature and the natural forces, energies generated in the universe. It is the work of the angels and the fairies, the various types called genii or genii or sylphs, under the directions of Indra to keep light, heat, sound, and water and the elemental forces of nature in equilibrium. Without the angels and the fairies, there would be frequent colossal disturbances in the universe as a result of the imbalance of these elements and energies. For the human mind plays havoc with the natural forces through scientific exploitation. It is only after many years that the natural forces go out of control. During such eruption in the universe, resulting as chaos in the world, such as earthquakes, floods, famines, etc., not even the angels and fairies nor Indra can control the cosmic consequences. These cosmic consequences are universal disharmony caused by human extravagance and excessiveness. Then the Ancient One himself must come into creation and work to restore equilibrium in the universe. Indra has control of all the 330 million gods or angels. Each angel performs a different function under Indra's reign. Some control the winds, temperature, the seas, or evolving forms, as some fairies are connected with metals, vegetation, worms, insect, fish, birds, or animals. The 330 million angels in Diva Lok perform specific functions for the maintenance or preservation of the universe according to the specific duty assigned them by Indra. Each angel is called a god of this, of this power or that power. As it is said, Neptune rules the sea. The metal world descends directly from Tej, T-J, original fire, and the subtle world descends from the mental. The subtle world is of water, 276 states of gas and therefore Indra is known as the god of rain, and that the subtle water pours in the world, raindrops. The rain of the gross world is a shadow of the water in the 276 states of gas combined in the subtle. When pure mental fire and pure subtle water combine, a subtle gaseous combustion results lightning flashes. Hence, Indra's powers manifest in the gross world as electrical storms, what the Greeks call Zeus' thunderbolt. 
Indra and the angels do not advance to the third subtle plane because neither have a gross body, and one needs a gross human body to advance. Indra and his angels remain stationary in the first and second sections of Divalok. However, the third plane pilgrim advancing the third section has a physical human body, as well as a subtle and mental body, and so he can advance. Where the subtle consciousness is fully developed and the subtle energy, occult power is not misused. So, we basically close and realize that there's more to this nothing and everything that we will continue on. But isn't it, isn't it wonderful to, to, uh, to discover and experience such works? And I'm so happy to be able to share them with you. And for more information about Avatar Mir Baba, you could just Google his name. <laughs> Hit Mir Baba on Google and you'll have many, many... And uh, anyway, until the next time, as Meher Baba says, do your best in life, leave the rest to God. Don't worry, be happy. Jai Baba.